The Pacific War, sometimes called the Asia-Pacific War, was the theater of World War II that was fought in Asia, the Pacific Ocean, the Indian Ocean, and Oceania. It was geographically the largest theater of the war, including the vast Pacific Ocean Theater, the Southwest Pacific Theater, the Southeast Asian Theater, the Second Sino-Japanese War, and the Soviet-Japanese War. Numerous battlefields are all over the Pacific, and they all led up to one specific thing, having control of this vast area, and most important of all, to keep the Japanese out from there. Today we will look into one of the smaller but very important first steps of the Pacific War Theater, the Battle of Tarawa. The Battle of Tarawa was fought on the 20th to the 23rd of November 1943 between the United States and Japan at the Tarawa Atoll in the Gilberts Islands and was part of Operation Galvanic, the planned US invasion of the Gilberts. Nearly 6,400 Japanese, Koreans and Americans died in the fighting mostly on and around the small island of Bethio, in the extreme southwest of Tarawa Atoll. The Battle of Tarawa was the first American offensive in the critical Central Pacific region. It was also the first time in the Pacific War that the United States had faced serious Japanese opposition to an amphibious landing. Previous landings met little or no initial resistance, but on Tarawa, the 4,500 Japanese defenders were well supplied and well prepared, and they fought almost to the last man, exacting a heavy toll on the United States Marine Corps. The losses on Tarawa were incurred within only 76 hours. To set up forward air bases capable of supporting operations across the mid-Pacific, to the Philippines and into Japan, the US planned to take the Mariana Islands. The Marianas were heavily defended. Naval doctrine of the time held that in order for attacks to succeed, land-based aircraft would be required to weaken the defenses and protect the invasion forces. The nearest islands capable of supporting such an effort were the Marshall Islands. Taking the Marshalls would provide the base needed to launch an offensive on the Marianas, but the Marshalls were cut off from direct communication with Hawaii by a Japanese garrison and air base on the small island of Bethio, on the western side of Tarawa Atoll in the Gilbert Islands. Thus, eventually to launch an invasion of the Marianas, the battle had to start far to the east at Tarawa. Located about 2,400 miles southwest of Pearl Harbor, Bethio is the largest island on the Tarawa Atoll. The small flat island lies in the southernmost reach of the lagoon and was the base of the majority of the Japanese troops. Shaped Roughly like a long, thin triangle, the tiny island is approximately two miles long. It is narrow, being only 800 yards wide at its widest point. A long pier was constructed jutting out from the north shore onto which cargo ships could unload cargo while anchored beyond the 500 meter wide shallow reef which surrounded the island. The northern coast of the island faces into the lagoon, while the southern and western sides faces the deep waters of the ocean. The primary goal in the Japanese defensive scheme was to stop the attackers in the water or pin them onto the beaches. A tremendous number of pillboxes and firing pits were constructed with excellent field of fire over the water and sandy shore. 
in the interior of the island was the command post and a number of large shelters designed to protect defenders from air attack and bombardment. The Japanese worked intensely for nearly a year to fortify the island. As on so many other of the uh, Pacific locations, it was all about one specific feature, an airfield. And on this little island of Betio, an airfield was cut into the bush straight down the center of the island. And this was the main target, the main objective for the US forces. The American invasion force to the Gilberts was the largest yet assembled for a single operation in the Pacific, consisting of 17 aircraft carriers, 12 battleships, 8 heavy cruisers, 4 light cruisers, 66 destroyers and 36 transport ships with a total of 35,000 troops. A gunnery duel soon developed between the battleships and the Japanese and the Americans proved very accurate with several of the 16 inch shells finding their mark. The damage to the big guns left the approach to Lagoon open. Following the gunnery duel and an air attack of the island at 0610, the naval bombardment of the island began in earnest and was sustained for the next three hours. The plan was to land Marines on the north beaches divided into three sections. The supporting naval bombardment lifted and the Marines started their attack from the lagoon at 0900, 30 minutes later than expected but found the tide had not risen enough to allow their shallow draft hanging boats to clear the reef. Only the tracked LVT alligators were able to come across. The US LVTs were mostly leaking as a result of heavy Japanese firing. Half of the LVTs were knocked out of action by the end of the first day. Early attempts to land tanks for close to port and to get past the seawall failed when the LCM landing craft carrying them hung up behind the reef. Some of these craft were hit out in the lagoon while they waited to move into the beach and either sank outright or had to withdraw without while taking on water. Two steward tanks were landed on the east end of the beach but were knocked out of action fairly quickly. By noon the marines had successfully taken the beach as far as the first line of Jap Japanese defenses. By 1530 the line had moved inland in places but was still generally along the first line of defenses. The arrival of tanks started the line moving on Red 3 and the end of Red 2, the right flank as viewed from north, and by nightfall the line was about halfway across the island, only a short distance from the main runway. The counter attack from the Japanese never came and the Marines held their ground. By the end of the first day, over 5,000 Marines put ashore, 1,500 were casualties, either dead or wounded. During day two and three, the US troops managed to find, destroy and clear out all Japanese positions. The aftermath of the battle was this. 4,690 of the island's defenders were killed. The second Marine division suffered 894 killed in action. A further 2,188 men were wounded in battle, 102 officers and 2,086 men. Of the roughly 12,000 second Marine division Marines on Tarawa, 3,166 officers and men became casualties. Nearly all of these casualties were suffered in the 76 hours between the landing at 0910, November the 20th, and the island of Bethio being declared secure at 1330, November the 23rd. The capture of Tarawa 
knocked down the front door to the Japanese defenses in the Central Pacific and paved the way for more advancements towards the target to get the Japanese out of the Central Pacific. <laughs>